Hey guys, what's up Productions here and welcome back to this brand new video. And today it is time for the BNL Karting Series kickoff. Yeah, it is currently Thursday, we have just arrived, it's a little past 12, or a little past 1 actually. Well, we are here to basically prepare everything so that we can uh, use the first official test day tomorrow. And one cool thing about arriving so early is that there's pretty much no one who's out on track. This, uh, there are two junior max drivers right now out on track and that's about it. So yeah, let's build everything up and uh, let's see what we can do. So even though we're with Bouvan, we're also building up our own tent. This is just a place to hang around and, uh, well, we're sleeping in the van tonight. So uh, yeah, let's see how that looks when it's built up. So because we are now with the team in the tent, we have our own tent to use as like just a place to hang out and relax and stuff. We're going to have dinner here in a few minutes. I think I've got uh, pretty much nothing to complain about. Yeah, life's good. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes, the track restaurant is closed, so uh, we have to improvise. Pizza, pizza, pizza time. Hey, <laughs> Sheng. Yeah. Well guys, good morning. Uh, yeah, I fell asleep a little bit earlier than I thought I would. I am uh, with my best friend, our little electric heater, which uh, was very nice to have in the van the, this night because it was it was actually freezing. It was like minus two degrees or m minus four even, I think. So yeah, today it is time for practice, uh, scrutineering, uh, tire checks, all that stuff. And uh, today we'll finally uh, have a little bit of an idea of where we stand in terms of pace in this huge and competitive field. So. Yeah, looking forward to it. Ja man. Ja man. Ja man. Ja man. Mooie broek aan man. Ja bro. We have official SP driver. Yes. Ja bro. Doe het netjes, niet gehaast. In het midden, niet ernaast. Mission accomplished. Time yeah. for the first session. Let's see what we can do. Alrighty guys, welcome back on board. We're doing live commentary for this year, for every session that we do in an official weekend. And uh, well, for this time, we are at the BNL Karting Series kickoff. And I have to say, I haven't had much more of a shit start to a weekend than this one. For some reason, we just had massive problems with the handling and also with the engine. Uh, we later found out that there was actually a crack in the power valve, so that of course gives a huge disadvantage in terms of power because that, 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 that kick in of the power that a Rosax has it's just gone because the uh, power valve can't really open properly and you can see that here um, yeah the driving looks awful um, I had no grip I had no power and uh, something else that happened which is quite strange uh, yeah just take a look at the screen and see if you notice anything changing yeah something hit the GoPro cracked the lens and uh, yeah we now have a damaged GoPro I actually have it right here and also another funny thing uh, take a look at our straight line speed deficit we have yeah, that's not ideal. Uh, first of all, when you're driving sh like shit and then you also have a bad engine, of course, you will be struggling massively on the straights. Um, yeah, it was just an awful beginning and for some reason we just struggled a lot in this session. Um, yeah, we couldn't really find out what the problem was. Um, we did switch to another set of tires and another engine after this. Uh, I think that gained us like a couple of, uh, couple of tents, but we we're still a long way off, so my driving was also definitely not right. And uh, yeah, with these BNL Karting Series practice sessions, you really want just to be on it from the beginning because uh, everyone is, you know, fast immediately. And if you are not, then you are massively on the back foot because you cannot test setup properly. You will miss a lot of, you know, uh, just rhythm from everything that everyone does. And that's something that we struggled with a lot, as you can see here. At the beginning of the lab, we were in front of this entire train and then afterwards, just look at that gap. 
Then, uh, yeah, for the next session, we decided to, of course, change the tires, but we also changed the rims. We are now on the MXC rims. We started out on the standard MXJ wheels. And, uh, yeah, also we switched to our uh, different engine, which didn't luckily have any problems, so that's good. And you can immediately see that in this session that we were actually able to follow some people. If you remember back to the last session, the 310, she overtook us and, well, she was instantly off. But this time we were actually able to keep up. And um, that's already a huge step in the right direction. I think we gained like one and a half second, which is a lot for just tires and engine. Uh, so yeah, that's good. Then uh, we still had about a second to gain in uh, just our driving, which is also quite a lot. But that's of course doable because uh, yeah, you don't really have to change anything on the card apart from you know your driving style, which is doable of course in a few uh, sessions. So yeah, as you can see here, we are still behind the 310, and we can sort of keep up. Uh, she's pulling away a little bit here and there, um, but luckily now the difference isn't as huge anymore. So yeah, even though we were still quite a bit off the pace, I did have a slightly positive feeling towards, uh, yeah, just towards her driving. And I definitely saw that there was a little bit of potential in the dry. Uh, yeah, the session is over now, uh, time to go back to our tent and uh, do a little bit of a recap of the sessions with our mechanic. That's uh, one way to start the weekend. Uh, yeah, engine problems, uh, problems with the handling as well. Thing was absolutely on ice. Also, something else happened, look. I don't know if you are able to tell, but uh, yeah, the lens cracked from the old GoPro. So I think we're going to switch to another engine now, put on some other tires, and then uh, if the problems are still there, then we are fucked. But let's not hope for that. Alrighty then, time for the second part of the day. In this part of the day, you are obliged to use the uh, scanned practice tires, which is a set of tires that you let uh, you know the organization scan so that they know that you are running one set of tires for the rest of the day. This is done to you know make it kind of even so that everyone runs one set of tires uh, on a given part of the day. And that's the one that we were on now. Uh, pretty much everyone always goes on new tires, including us. We're now also running a race engine, so our engine problems are over now because this engine is of course prepared by the team. And you can see that, that we can now actually overtake people. As you can see here, the 310 from the previous two clips, we overtook her there. Uh, uh, yeah, no real problems. So the pace was starting to become better and better every session. But still, uh, yeah, we had some problems with the driving and also a little bit with the setup. Uh, as you can see there, I'm still kind of all over the place with the back end. The back end is sliding a lot. And uh, that is partly down to the reason that I was carrying a little bit too much entry speed in almost all of the corners. Uh, but now I could at least see that because I was able to keep up with the, the group of other drivers. And even though that the drivers we are uh, in a fight with right now, or in a fight with, we are following right now, aren't the quickest, we are still able to follow them and uh, also gain on them a little bit. So we can still see a little bit where we are gaining and losing time. And that is the whole thing with these practice sessions at the BNL. You always want to be in a group so that you can see where and uh, where and you are gaining time and not. Then a little bit uh, later on in the day, we get overtaken by our teammate there, Lawrence. Um, yeah, he was actually uh, a little bit quicker than us, uh, also not quite on the pace of the top guys yet, but uh, yeah, definitely closer than us. And here you can really see where he pulls away. Here you can see in the braking zone that we gain a little bit on him, then we get on the power and then he just pulls away. And that just means that our moment of getting on the power or, yeah, there's, there's something not right in the middle of the corner. Here again, we, we brake towards him and then he pulls away on exit. And that seems to be a little bit of a pattern with my driving style. I, I tend to overcook it a little bit on the entry. And then that, uh, yeah, as we make a little bit of a mistake there on the apex again, um, that just, you know, we just sacrifice exit speed by that. It might be, it might look cool. It might be a little bit. Well, that's not the reason why I do it, of course. But yeah, we, we just, for some reason, um, always overcook the ex the entrances a little bit, which makes us lose out on uh, on exit, of course, which is not what you want. Then a little bit later on the day again, here we get. Um, I think we have a fast driver behind us. Um, and I'm going to get overtaken by him in a couple of corners and then we can really see where we are losing some time because the driver behind us, I think he had about top 10 pace and uh, being in the top 10 was actually, uh, if we were in the top 10 that weekend that would have been a huge plus but our goal was to be uh, to go through to the final immediately and uh, how we are able to do that or how we are not able to do that I will explain that a little bit later on in the weekend because today it is still practice and here you can see that we're actually keeping up a little bit we lose a little bit of time there in the second right hander uh, and yeah, it's mostly just being smooth. As you can see here, our driving style is a little bit more smooth again, but still the 322 just pulls away ever so slightly in every corner. And you know, when, when everyone just pulls away a little bit in every corner like that, that just means that there's something fundamentally wrong with the driving style. 
um, because you know if it's just one corner where they pull away massively then you can really say okay it's that corner you just mess up your brake too late or you go in the power not soon enough but here we get overtaken by another driver and you can really just see that in every corner they just pull away a little bit maybe 30 40 centimeters here a little bit again just that speed in the middle of the corner and then uh, yeah you, now the gap is already about yeah one and a half car lengths here we actually do gain a little bit back because we are we actually started to get the hang of that corner but then on the straight again you see that we lose a little bit same here we break towards him uh, but yeah it, the gap sort of stays the same around this part actually so compared to the 338 we were actually not too bad through that section but yeah the corners onto the big straights that's where we are losing a little bit of time and uh, that was more evident when we were behind the 322 uh, but with, compared to the 338 we were actually not too bad then here uh, we go into the last session here we have Ralph ahead of us who uh, also didn't have the best of days he had a little bit of engine problems which you will most likely be able to see on this straight here we get an okay exit and yeah you can see there that we just gain on him slipstream 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 and we can pull alongside almost even before the start finish uh, line is there so yeah you definitely saw that he had a little bit of problems as we now also get overtaken by our teammate Lawrence again um, and I have to say this is the last session of the day um, yeah this is the pace improved again ever so slightly maybe by a couple of tenths but we were still yeah about eight tenths of the fastest guys um, but now you can actually see that we're kind of able to keep up with Lawrence as well throughout these corners we break towards him a little bit but now on exits the gap actually stays sort of the same and also in the double right hander you can see there that well he pulls away a little bit in the second part of the right hander but uh, yeah like, it's it's not too bad right now here we skip forward a little bit because the camera stopped recording there because well it's the cam box it always does that um, yeah, we are actually kind of able to follow him. Now coming onto the straight, when you are this close behind someone, coming onto the main straight of gank, that usually means that you can slipstream and do a dive from into turn one, and we are definitely slipstreaming and gaining. And here we go for the inside, which actually turns into kind of a nice uh, uh, overtake. Uh, he gives us a little bit of a bump there because of course he gets a better exit because he takes the corner wider than I could because I was on the inside. And uh, that's one thing with the BNL. Um, most drivers just immediately try to re-overtake you and that's what Lawrence does right here. We do a beautiful switchback though, we get a little bit of an overlap on him which uh, turns into an overtake into the end of the Europa launch chicane. And here they cannot really do the switchback because it's really tight on exit, there's the big curb with the, also with like the huge uh, crash block that is on the curb. So you can't really do a switchback, also you can't go around the outside there. Uh, I've never seen something like that happen so it's an ideal spot to overtake at even though the braking is a little bit tricky and it's a little bit of a tight corner. But yeah, we're still in front and uh, yeah, in the end of the day, actually the pace was not as bad as it was at the beginning of the day. We're still missing quite a bit. The fastest guys were doing like 54 or something and we were stuck at 55, uh, yeah, 5, 4, I, I, I don't exactly remember the lap times. Um, but yeah, luckily we managed to improve a little bit, but I also uh, realized that we still had quite a long way to go. So uh, yeah, we... Uh, it was uh, looking interesting for the day after this. Well guys, great news! We improved slightly. Yeah, it's starting to go a little bit better. Uh, turned out that there was a lot of time that I was leaving myself in the braking zones. Uh, you could brake a lot later than what I was braking because there's so much grip. I uh, didn't really quite catch that yet. So, uh, like, I think we gained about three or four tenths there. Still a long way to go. Still about, yeah, like eight tenths to find. But at least we're on the right track, so that's good. Now, time for the briefing. Hello guys, we are here with the Stichting. Say hello everyone, say hello! Oh, Yay! Oh, fuck you! Alright people, end of uh, day one, yeah. Strange, I really don't know what, 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 what the fuck. Yeah, we'll be looking at a lot of data tonight and uh, footage and then uh, we'll see. Let's go to our little uh, house. Alright people, after some hours we had some nice food. Uh, went to a little holiday house, the same one that we were in last time, so I'm not going to do a tour. Spent almost... Uh, one and a half hours looking at data and footage and uh, yeah there's a lot to be found in my driving about a second I think and a little bit on the setup maybe a little bit on the engine as well engine setup but yeah the, the biggest part is definitely my driving I think we could get like eight or nine tenths um, it's it's all entry speed like it's a shame I can't show you the data because it belongs to the team of course but yeah it's basically every entry uh, or yeah, I'm basically doing the opposite of what I did last year Last year I like to attack the corners, like take a lot of entry speed. Now I'm not taking enough entry speed, which makes our apex speed low. And well, if your apex speed is low, your exit speed will be low as well. And then you won't have top speed and boom, lap time gone. 
Yeah, I guess we'll just have more work to do tomorrow. I'm going to sleep now. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good morning, people. Day two. So today it is time for first a warm up, then qualifying, and then two or three heats. I don't remember. So yeah, today is actually already really important uh, as it is a big race. We have already races on Saturday to determine who is going to drive in the pre-final and final. So uh, yeah, it's important that we get our shit together now. Also, uh, yeah, I won't have any onboard footage for today because it's not allowed to have a camera on the car today. So yeah, let's go to the track and let's see what we can do. All right, guys. Uh, yeah, just had uh, qualifying and before that the warm up. Warm up was shit. Uh, we were over a second too slow again and then uh, when we went to qualifying new tires of course a little bit of different setup and that solved basically all of the problems uh, yeah I think we got p15 in group out of 30 I don't know how many so that's decent um, yeah it was definitely a lot in the tires again for some reason uh, but yeah at least we found something now uh, we still miss about six to seven tenths which is all driving so that's good now at least I'm sure that the card is good and that I can focus fully on my driving so yeah about to go into heat one in which we will have a new point of view for the first time all right uh, quick little update guys um, like I said we have a lot of drivers so that means that there's a lot of different groups that we can race in. like here you see senior max A versus B here senior max C versus D and we are in group D so that means that we will be racing against group C and we have to get into Park Ferme at 13.10 and the start is at uh, 13.27. Oh no, sorry, 13.30. So we still have some time to wait. Alright guys, we are back on the grid of the B&L karting series. Basically one of the highest levels of karting you can do in Europe, at least for Rotex, it is pretty much the highest uh, together with the European Championship. Uh, yeah, most drivers who do the European Championship also race in the B&L karting series, so that's why the level is so high. Uh, as you can see there, we are starting on P16 on the grid. Uh, we got P15 in group in qualifying, uh, which is P16 in the heats. Uh, because there are so many drivers, uh, all of the drivers are split up into four different groups, A, B, C and D. We are in group D and in group D we qualified in P15. Um, so that means that for every qualifying heat, we will be starting in that position. And um, in order for us to get through into the first 30 drivers, uh, which go immediately to the pre-final and the final, we have to finish around P18 every heat, so that was our goal. But anyways, here we go, five red lights, away we go. Uh, we start on the outside of the uh, of the grid, and there you can see it's quite busy, quite a lot of uh, pushing, and yeah, it's just very busy into the uh, first corner, because everyone, of course, wants to exit the first corner in first place. Um, and there you can see that we are right in the mix. It is a bit of a shame that we are not allowed to use onboard cameras because I cannot really show you my POV. But you can see, uh, well, decently well enough how it goes there. There you can see that there's some drivers getting pushed out to the side from which we can profit. We are on the inside looking for a little bit of a gap there. We are actually right behind Ralph, our friend. Uh, there we go up the inside uh, and I think we gain a couple of positions there. You, you saw my helmet fly by there in the flurry of cards. Uh, yeah, of course the camera crew focuses mostly on the front group, but sometimes they also focus on the back. And we actually got some pretty nice overtakes on camera right here. So uh, yeah, that's uh, I'm I'm uh, happy to show you guys this. Yeah, it just brings a smile to my face to see myself back here. Yeah, it's so amazing to be back. It's such a challenge. There you can see us. We are right behind the orange GKS card. Uh, and I think uh, at the end of this lap we are even going for the overtake. But no, the camera pans out a little bit. Let's see if we can see us going for the overtake there. Uh, no, we didn't do it right here then, but we a little bit later then. Here you can see us... Uh, wait, where are we? Yeah, there we are. We can see that there's some battling going on ahead of us. We tried to sneak up the inside of that guy too, but... Uh, oh, there you can see that I have to defend. And this overtake was really crazy. Uh, I was on the outside, and there were two drivers on the inside. And there you can see me. I kind of bumped someone here. You can hear the commentator talk about us. Assaulted from the right-hand side. I think that might have been Bram Osservada getting his elbows out there. Uh, Bram making his return to the championship after a number of years away, but it's still being competitively counted. Yeah, um, the commentator, his name is Alex, a uh, really good friend of mine actually. He's always really involved with all of the drivers. Um, so yeah, it was great that he had a commentary of our overtake there. Um, then going on to a little bit towards the end of the race already, I think. Uh, there you can see us behind Ralph again. Um, and we were slipstreaming, slipstreaming, slipstreaming on the straight right here. Uh, and then you can see us there going for the overtake, we overtook him and that is P13 for us. But I still haven't explained that first overtake. I was on the outside, there were two drivers on the inside and there was one driver ahead of me. And I basically just braked around the outside and also overtook the guy who was uh, in front of us. 
So that was the end of the first heat and I think we finished in P13. So we gained three places during that race, which is, uh, well, not too shabby if you ask me. Um, yeah, I was just happy that I finished the race uh, and we gained some positions. There you can see we finished eight seconds behind the leader. So I was also, yeah, kind of pleased with that. Um, yeah, for just for our return to this strong international grid, I think uh, we can be uh, a little bit happy with that one. All right then, second heat of the day. Um, this time we are racing, I believe, Group A. I am not really sure. We'll see that in a few seconds. Uh, when the thing pops on the screen. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we are indeed racing Group A. And uh, there you can see that the left-hand side of the grid is exactly the same. We are still starting in P16 and the right-hand side, that's the new competitor. So there's a set group of uh, drivers that we will be racing against in every heat. And the other group will be, uh, well, changing all the time. Anyways, here we go. Five red lights and away we go. We are actually the first one to move to the inside, as you can see there. Uh, again, we are starting in P16. So let's see if we can gain some more positions uh, with that. We go around the outside which doesn't really pay off oh, a little bit. I think we gained one position. Here we are up the inside of another cart, but we don't really quite have the overlap, so we can go around the outside again. Uh, there you can see actually our teammate Tommy is going up the inside, but there's a huge crash there, and uh, we kind of get bogged down by that, and that means that drivers can go around us. I had to brake to avoid uh, some contact, and when you do that, and all the other drivers go on the accelerator, of course they'll just shoot right around you, so we lost a couple of positions there. But we are still right in the mix, so uh, nothing is lost yet. We still have a race of 10 minutes ahead of us. Uh, let's see, I've kind of lost where we are. All oh, right, there we are. Yeah, we. I think we are like P18 uh, here, so we lost a little bit. But uh, like I said, we still have a long race ahead, so we can still make up some positions there. The most important thing to do in these races is just to keep attacking. Because in this competition, if you're not aggressive enough, you will be the one who, uh, who gets overtaken. Like Super GT always says, if you not if you don't go forwards, you'll go backwards, and that's very much the case here. Here we, we try to go up the inside of that guy as well, but we were a little bit too far away. We get a poor exit, so we can't really keep up with him. But also, you can see behind us there's, there's a little bit of a gap, so that's good. Um, so yeah, we get settled now here a little bit, and I think we're going to skip ahead a little bit uh, into the next part of the race. Yeah, there we go. You can see that uh, now that we are in a train, I believe we are around P17, P18. Um, and you can just see here that uh, in a train like this, um, yeah, oh, we are P16 actually, there, there's some shuffling ahead and then you can see that the whole train kind of collapses in on itself. And you have to really stay alert during this because you can gain or lose a lot of positions. There we try to have a little look up the inside there, but yeah, we just were a little bit too far away. And it's also kind of a risky place to go for the move there. Uh, there you can see that Tommy is absolutely pulling away from the rest of the field. He was definitely the fastest guy out on track right here. And there you can see in the background, it's just constantly fighting. And here we uh, skip ahead a, li a little bit actually. And here, here is a perfect example of why you should be awake. We go up the inside into the double left hander. The guy tries to do a little bit of a switchback. He touches us a little bit, but we stay ahead by just keeping our foot planted. Uh, here he tries to go up the inside again, but we squeeze him onto the curbing, which makes him have a poor exit, which means that we can keep it around the outside. We're actually a little bit lucky they let us live there, but yeah, if you just keep your foot planted, they can't really do much. And uh, because behind us, he is now battling with Ralph, we, you can see again that we have a little bit of a gap. Ralph actually goes for the move there. And, um, you know, you always feel it when you have a little bit of a gap behind you. And that was definitely the case here. So now we uh, could f uh, focus on uh, continuing our charge forwards as we are now uh, back into P16. And uh, a little bit later on, on the, in the race, we actually overtook the guy uh, behind us. But then what happened, I'll let that uh, be explained by our commentator. A bit further back. Oh, Bram Osavada gets out, uh, well, gets muscled out of the way, courtesy of Adam Valster. And 327. I think it was Valster just decided to send it and thought, well, there's someone there. I might be able to. I might be able to stop inside. Well, unfortunately, Bram Osavada might have a bit more of a slightly scuffed side pod again. Yes, uh, Alex there had it uh, exactly right. Uh, we stayed in that position until the end of the race, but there you can see that there's some more chaos as we go onto the finish line. But no, we finish in P19. Uh, yeah, not really the best position. Uh, you definitely want to be P18 or above if you want to have a chance to move onto the final directly. Uh, so yeah, that was a little bit of a uh, less good round, let's put it like that. But uh, still we have one more heat and uh, let's see what we can do in that one. Well guys, time for the final heat of the day. This is heat 3 where we are racing the last group, which I think is group C. And like the last two heats, uh, the left hand side of the grid is exactly the same as what it was. And then on the right hand side we have the new drivers that we will be racing against. 
Also guys, by the way, if you are enjoying this new style of video and if you are enjoying the videos over the last few weeks, then please consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons. You know, you really help me when you do that and we're trying to get this channel to 100,000 subs. It's really going well and I love you guys for all the support you've been giving me. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that, hit that uh, subscribe button and the like button too. <clears throat> Anyways, well, it is time now to uh, get ready for the uh, last heat of the day. Uh, we need to get a good result in this one if we want to go through to the final. Well, five red lights and away we go. Again, we're one of the first drivers to go to the inside of the track, which is of course something you want because on the inside usually then you're safe. And you can see here that the starts actually relatively clean apart from some few drivers who uh, mounted each other there, as you can see. Um, but yeah, apart from that, not really much happened, and it happened behind us anyway, so we didn't really gain anything from that. And here you can see it's going quite well. Uh, yeah, we haven't gained or lost anything. Uh, oh no, maybe we lost a couple of positions because we're a little bit further back than what we started. Uh, but at least we survived, so that's the most important thing. And also we did not get a front fairing penalty, which is of course very useful in a close field like this. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of argy bargy going on ahead of us. We tried to profit from it, but we're just a little bit too far away. We cannot really do anything. Now we're right up the back bumper of the CRG driver in front, but he defends and we cannot go up the inside there. Well, we could have gone more towards the inside, but we would have just lost a buttload of time. So it was the best decision to not do it. Uh, here we also decided to stick behind, but I think uh, we had a good enough exit on this... Uh, on the last corner that we could slipstream on the straight and then go for the move into this corner yes there we go you see us uh, overtaking him there that's kind of an advantage that we have our helmet really uh, is bright orange so you can really see it uh, here we do get re-overtaken by the CRG driver though so yeah we lost out uh, that position once again uh, here I'm really close behind him and we're just waiting for him to make a little bit of a mistake. There you can see that we are, we are uh, in the front of the uh, back marker train. Oh yeah, not back marker, but the last uh, guys in the heat. So yeah, we are a little bit further back than in the other heats, uh, which is a little bit of a shame, but of course you cannot have everything. And yeah, apart from that, uh, nothing much really happened on camera. So yeah, we finished P18 in that one. And yeah we are at this moment i didn't really know yet if that was enough to go through immediately to the final because you do not want to start in that second chance heat there's just more chances to wreck it uh, your tires get worn out more so yeah going through to the final is something you definitely want so let's see what it was all right guys those were the heats um yeah the first one pretty good uh second one meh third one meh uh, I'm just hoping that it's enough to go into the final uh, without going to the second chance. I doubt it, but I hope. But yeah, I'm, at least I'm glad that uh, we at least are able to compete, you know. If you look at our place Friday, that was a shit. So uh, yeah, at least we found that. Now, cleaning time with the entire team. Alright, I've got two guys here who wanted to be in the video. Say something. Hi! <laughs> okay. It's gay! It's gay! It's gay! <laughs> And what's your what is your name on Instagram? Boas Maximov. Yes, get, go follow him and, and him too. What's what's your Instagram? Ah, okay, go follow them on Instagram. Yeah. All right, done, clean. Time to get back to our uh, holiday house. And uh, I'm not unsatisfied about today. It was actually really decent. Yeah, we're just we're just back and like. This level is much higher than what we did last year. So the fact that we are actually able to compete and you know not be dead last, that's I, I'm happy about that. The only way is up from here, man. I, I really feel confident that we can improve more this year. Anyways, let's get back and then we'll see. We have Ralphie Delphi. Ralphie Delphi. And here we have Mika. Oh, oh. Oh, did this. Hello guys. Welcome to Black Forest around me. No, uh, we are back in the holiday park. And uh, I have good news. We made it through to the pre-final without having to do the second chance, so that's nice. So uh, yeah, good. Good morning, guys. Finals day. Like I said yesterday, luckily we are through to the finals immediately. That means that we have a little bit of a chill schedule. We only have three sessions, warm-up, pre-final and final. And yeah, that's spread out throughout the entire day. So also we could uh, sleep in a little bit, which is nice. And uh, yeah, now we have just plenty of time to do everything. Like we've got a warm up, then two hours of nothing, then a pre-final, then three hours of nothing and then the final. So yeah. So let's clean up our little house and then uh, go to the track. Look, as you can maybe see or not see, um, CRMX qualified one to 30, uh, only has Park Ferme open at 9.28. And it is now 
if it's all focused. A24, so we actually have plenty of time to do everything. And of course we have a mechanic, so yeah, he will do it for us, mostly. And, uh, well, there's everyone else here in the team. Rain, 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 no bueno, no, 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 please, no, rain, fuck. Yeah, shit, it's fucking raining. That's, uh, interesting, let's say that. Yeah, that's going to change things. Yes, guys, uh, we got blessed by the weather conditions because uh, we just had a warm up and I think we are P10 or P11. So that's really good. Um, yeah, I just hope that it stays like this for the entire uh, day because then uh, if we would get like close to P10, P11 in the races too, that would be an amazing start to the season. Because we qualified so well, we can now watch the other seniors race because they now have a second chance seat and we don't have to take part in that because we qualified P29. So uh, I'm just going to sit on the grandstand and watch the other seniors. Alright guys, time for the start of the second chance and it's wet so the chance of a big shunt is quite large, let's see. Red lights on the starting gantry, into the tram lines we go, revs rise, are we ready, are we steady? The senior road tax, second chance, a good start from the pole setup. Long in coming, Brad. As it's three wide going into turn two, they can use the runoff area for the first time. And Elia Papasena uses that very nicely. On the opening tour, gets himself up into oh. second position. Yeah, guys, pretty eventful second chance. Uh, I enjoyed watching it. But uh, yeah, now it's time for the pre final. Let's do it. Alright, guys, welcome to the first big event of the weekend, the pre final. In this session, uh, we are starting on the place of the average finishes that we had in uh, the heats, which in our case was P29. So uh, yeah, we're starting quite far to the back. Uh, but uh, yeah, but like I said, that's what you get when you finish round that 18th, 19th position in the heats. But anyways, here we go for the pre-final. Five red lights. We're rolling onto the uh, onto the grid now, and away we go. Actually, this race is on wet tires, just as the warm-up was. And in the warm-up, we got P10 in uh, in terms of lap time. So I know that as there's some major chaos there, that we had way more pace than the position that we were in at this point. So, and as you can see already, we are already gaining quite a lot of places. I think we have already gained like four or five positions, so that's pretty good. I do have to say though, every start so far has been quite good. We have gained uh, positions in nearly almost every uh, start. Well, nearly and almost uh, means the same, but anyway, you know what I mean. Uh, here on the open line, we try to go to the inside, which actually works out. And there is some more chaos on the outside, which you cannot really see here because well you can see it now but it happened off camera and because of that we gained even more positions uh, I think we are now up to like P22 P21 something like that and you can see us there uh, going through the hairpin now and you see that there's quite a few cars behind us I remember we started in P29 so gaining like seven to eight positions already that's really really good for the first lap especially at the BNO karting series as we now have uh, some very decisive moves for the lead here, uh, Van der Stoys uh, goes for the lead on Rillards, uh, but back there that's where we are. And there's also some more action going on there, you know, always in the wet there's a lot of chaos happening throughout the entire race. And here you go for the lead again, a three way scrap with, between Lee, uh, Rillards and uh, Van der Stoys. And uh, yeah, you see that everyone here takes the inside line nice and neatly as Lee now goes for the inside for Rillards, but uh, he gets pushed out a little bit there. There. And also then uh, here he tries to take the lead back, uh, gets his bumper fall in a little bit. And so yeah, the, at the front there was a really a big ding dong battle going on, but uh, skipping ahead a little bit there, you see that we are also gaining quite a few positions there. We gain another one and I think now we are up into P17. And you can see that that front of the stars has lost out immensely and he now comes back onto the track and kind of blocks us which makes, makes us lose a position. We now go towards his inside and we now overtake from the stars again. There he pushes us past the uh, JJ Racing Drive of Leon Zelenko and we are now up into P17 I think and we also create immediately a little bit of a gap behind us and look how many cards there are behind us. We started behind all of them and it is now we are gaining so many positions and it's going really well here. Oh no we are in P19. So we gained 10 positions in the first uh, 5 minutes of the race. So that's, yeah, that's, uh, I think that's quite good. So let's see how much more forward we can go. 
Um, the, we have the positive momentum coming with us. There you can see us that we take a little bit of a white line and we have a little bit of a sliding back end. We're now into P, still in P19. And uh, you see there that, uh, oh, that's uh, uh, Yuri Schoens, the guy running out the field there, an active member of our Discord server. By the way, our Carton Discord, join it. The link is in the description. It's awesome. Just join it. But uh, yeah, he has had quite a shocker of a race so far. And uh, yeah, we got screwed over a little bit in the end there by uh, by by one of the other drivers, and uh, we lost another position. But because of the other drivers uh, had penalties, we actually well we finished the race in P18 as you can see here, but we actually got promoted into P16. And getting 16th in the field of 36 BNL drivers that's the best result that we've had so far. Time for the senior road tax BNL Karting Series kickoff final. Let's take you through the fully packed 36 strong grid. Denmark and Switzerland, row seven, William Christensen and Mario Sidler. The UK and the Netherlands, row eight, Je Ethan Jeff Hall. And for those Red X Tunes fans out there, it's Bramo Savarda. Tommy van der Stoys and Sebastian Bach on row. Well, after uh, that little introduction by uh, our friend Alex there, uh, it's time for the final. This one was on slicks and uh, I was starting in P16. I was a little bit nervous because I've never started this far up in the, up an international field before. But lights out and away we go. We have the inside four ones, which is actually quite nice. Uh, we dive into the first corner. I don't think we gain or lose anything. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit chaotic as there are some <laughs> major crashes happening. Uh, but we get through there relatively unharmed. The only bad thing is that in those uh, that in that uh, chaos we actually end up getting a front fairing penalty, which is of course not what you want. Which will add five seconds to our finishing time. And in a close field like this, that is not what you want. That is really going to cost us in the end. But yeah, there's nothing we can do about it now. We can only try and minimize the damage, which is what we are doing right now. I think we are still in like P15 or P16. And I was actually able to hold on the position quite nicely here, but I also knew that when it dried out, we were a little bit short on pace. Uh, especially if we're starting this far up the field there, you can see that the driver head goes for a move. We couldn't quite follow him through. And because we didn't follow him through, if you don't go forwards, you go backwards. We lost three positions in the next two corners. And that's, that's what makes racing at this level so tough. You really have to keep on it 100% of the time, because if you don't, you'll just go backwards. And that what, that's definitely what happened to us. Uh, yeah, I just wasn't really that quick yet. Oh, you can see some other driver attacking us because we, yeah, we just didn't really have the correct pace, you know, to be in this position in the field. So we were really vulnerable. In the in the end, he didn't manage to get through, and we now have some battling behind us. We made us lucky so that we can pull away again. But still, yeah, it's it, it was just damage limitation this race. It was just 15 minutes plus one lap of trying to hold on to my position. Here you can see that we lost yet another couple of positions. And yeah, that's pretty much the race. Nothing much really happened. We just kept losing positions as Kyrillas uh, wins the uh, final and uh, Lewis Gilbert brings home uh, the second Craft Motorsport card. So it's a 1-2 for Craft Motorsport. Congratulations to them. That's yeah, quite impressive. We bring the card home. I think it is in P20. But because we had the front fairing penalty, sadly, we lost two more positions uh, to drivers behind us. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but uh, yeah, in terms of race pace, I think we can be uh, kind of satisfied with that. Seeing where we came from last year, we were really struggling in the Dutch Championship. Now we are competing at a much higher level, and I'm just going to take that pre-final and the heats, because those went really well, and uh, yeah, I think we can be kind of satisfied with that. Alright guys, final done. And uh, yeah, we had a mega start, I, I believe, I don't know yet, I'm not sure, but I believe we got up to like P10 or 11 or 12, something, somewhere, somewhere around that. And in the first five laps, I could follow them, no problem, but after that, uh, yeah, the pace was just not good enough. Uh, I dropped back a couple of places, got a front fairing as well, so that's, that's fucked. But uh, yeah, yeah, we're just not, not quick enough in the dry yet, man. Uh, it's difficult. That's the thing that we have to uh, work on most, and uh, yeah, we'll get to work on that like a lot this season, so. Anyways, time to clean everything up, yay. So yeah guys, that's the end of the weekend. Uh, unfortunately, I forgot to vlog the end, so that's why I'm sitting in my room now. I'm actually still editing the video. But uh, yeah, looking back, I think we can be decently satisfied with that. Uh, we might not have the best Friday, we might not have the best pace in the final, but still, uh, we showed some definite improvements over last year, which I think is really important, because last year, well, it was just shit. And uh, I think this weekend was a definite step in a good direction, and of course, the pace in the wet. Always. It's always been good. 
A little bit unfortunate that we got a little bit unlucky with one of our teammates. Uh, yeah, we got into a bit of a tangle, which made us both lose a lot of positions. And also, it just cost us a bucket load of time. But yeah, that's... Those mistakes only make us stronger. Now guys, remember, if you enjoyed this video, then please consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons. You know, you really help me when you do that. We're going to make something awesome of this year, guys. This is the first race of the year. There are many more to come. And, well, actually the next one, already next week. For the Dutch Championship 4 strokes, where I'll be making my debut in the ID Engine Shifter class. So if you want a little bit of a sneak peek of what this card is, I actually drove it a few uh, months back. You can see it right here. This video, however, is done, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.